Hi, I'm Sis, and I am once again here to talk about the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy. Topic of the day? Hope's themes. Out of the approximately 250 soundtracks in the XIII trilogy catalogue, there are eight tracks that can be either directly or indirectly traced back to Hope's original theme. Graphic design is not my thing, but here's a chart that shows how they're all connected. This is what I personally refer to as the Hope's theme chain. As you can see here, we're dealing with several generations of evolution. I honestly can't think of a single thing that Sustained by Hate and Almighty Bunuvelsa have in common as isolated tracks, but they do share the same root, and that's our starting point. In this video, I'm going to follow that chain and break down the soundtracks in a chronological order. There will be a bit of character analysis as well, but I'll try my best not to stray too far from the music. By the end of this, it will hopefully make sense how Hope's original theme could turn into something as utterly chaotic as Almighty Bunuelsa, and how this angsty teenage boy ended up fighting an internal war with an actual god. Alright, let's get this madness rolling! Without further ado, Hope's theme. This is where our journey starts a melancholic classical guitar piece. This theme manages to be very simple and very complicated at the same time. It moves through several different motifs with very smooth transitions, and it uses techniques that are nearly impossible to replicate on other instruments. Trust me, I've tried. It's just one instrument, but that guitar is being used to its full potential. Alright, let's listen to Hope's original theme. Same melody, but different chords. It's a nice way to add some variation to a motif. Moving over to a bit of a B theme. This part is going to return in 32. Another thing that will return Wrapping it up with some natural harmonics There we have it, the foundation of this entire analysis. A delicate, emotional theme performed on a single acoustic guitar. This soundtrack really shows where Hope is at in his character journey. He's grieving, he's got a ticking time bomb etched into his forearm, and he's surrounded by strangers who are not equipped to deal with a volatile 14-year-old. You can really feel his loneliness in this theme, and unfortunately that's an element that's going to get passed down the soundtrack chain. Hope never really stops being lonely. We have some pretty complex chords going on here, 
but thanks to the arpeggios, the dissonances actually end up elevating the melody. It's a clever arrangement. Not a piece for beginners. My favorite part of this soundtrack is, without a doubt, the intro with its chromatic bass line. It descends one half note at a time, completely ignoring the scale it's supposed to follow. In popular music, the bass line usually follows the course of the song, but in the intro of Hope's theme, the chords follow the bass line. That's why the sheet music looks like algebra. It works, though. It really works. I'm a sucker for major fifths. Okay, let's move on to the first rearrangement of Hope's theme. Sustained by Hate. This soundtrack is a side branch that doesn't really go anywhere. It's Hope's original theme, but orchestral. I really, really love it. <laughs> Here comes the wind instruments. And flute and strings were building. Starting to sound like a proper orchestra. And here it comes the crescendo. instruments here. It is a true orchestral piece. I know it so much. <laughs> Gotta stop somewhere, even when I don't want to. So, yeah, an orchestral version of Hope's original theme. It doesn't really need any further explanation than that, but we can go a bit deeper. Let me just put on my tinfoil hat. This is more like a tinfoil tiara, but I like it, so it stays. In the original game, every character has an assigned instrument or music style. Hope is obviously acoustic guitar, lightning is strings, snow is electric guitar slash metal, vanilla is piano, fang is brass, and sass is jazz and blues. 2009! <laughs> Anyway, the found family trope is so strong in this game that you can even find it in the music. When the characters work together, they become an odd little orchestra. Sustained by Hate is powerful and heartbreakingly emotional, but out of all the versions of Hope's theme, I would say that this is probably his least lonely one. Most of the time when we hear this soundtrack, Hope is opening up to other people. It plays during deep conversations with lightning and snow, and we also hear it in 13.2 when he talks to Sarah and Noel about his past. Sustained by Hate is melancholic, but if you look at it from this point of view, it 
kind of does represent the sense of belonging. Okay, no more tinfoil tiara for now. Let's move on to This is your home. This soundtrack could be seen as another side branch, but I think it works really well as a bridge between the 13 and 132 themes. This is your home is similar enough to Hope's theme that they're pretty easy to mix up, but you can hear the difference in how the melody is played. In the original theme, the melody is mostly backed up by arpeggios or chords, but in this version we have a lot of single notes. The accompaniment has been toned down, leaving us with a more simplistic arrangement. All right. You can really hear the chromatic bass line here. Lots of single notes. There's barely any accompaniment at all. Hope's theme, but less notes. Yeah, you get the gist of it. This is your home and Hope's original theme are really similar, but the minimalism here creates a pretty clear mood shift. Hope's theme is melancholic, but it's more complex complicated. There's fear, vulnerability, anxiety, even a bit of hopefulness in it. No pun intended. This is your home is cleaner, but it's also more raw. If you've heard the original, you can really tell that this version is missing a lot of notes. It sounds empty. If I were to put a name to this particular sense of melancholy, I would call it grief. This is your home place in the background when you explore the Estheim residence, and it's named after a line spoken by Bartholomew, Hope's dad. To me, this soundtrack represents the grief that the two of them now share. It's not just Hope's home, and it's not just Hope's theme. It's Bartholomew's too. Okay, that was a little dark. <laughs> Let's move on to Tomorrow's Dream from 13.2. New game, new theme. Hope is now 24, and since he was left unsupervised for 10 years, he is now an influential researcher with like half a dozen PhDs. This is his one and only soundtrack in 13.2. Surprise percussion. There we have it, the guitar. Yes, I skipped the repetition to get the, to the B theme. Established the main theme, we can add more instruments. Like a cello. And a violin. Very jazzy chords. Yeah. 
piano. Okay, listen to the guitar here. Very similar to his original theme. So, a lot of new instruments, since they are mostly there to accompany or embellish the main theme. I would still call this a guitar piece though. The melody has clearly been tampered with, but you can still trace it back to Hope's original theme, especially if you use This Is Your Home as a bridge. You mostly hear the similarities in the guitar, but you can also hear traces of it in the violin. When I spoke about Sustain by Hate, I drew a pretty far-fetched parallel between orchestras and a sense of belonging. I want to clarify here that I based that theory, if you want to call it that, on the arrangement style, not the number of instruments. We have percussion, strings, even a bit of piano, but the main melody is played on the guitar all the way through. We never get that kind of integration that we hear in Sustained by Hate. To me, the added instruments in Tomorrow's Dream show that Hope is surrounded by people, but he's still lonely. The entire party from the original game left him behind, and he's now going to do everything in his power to protect humanity on his own. Godhood Ark initiated. So, this is where I have to go on a little rant. In 13.2, we follow Sarah and Noel as they travel back and forth in time, trying to save the world, leaving Hope in charge of protecting the present timeline. Without his scientific accomplishments and his leadership skills, humanity would have been wiped out at the end of that game. Not just theoretically, he built a damn moon and saved mankind. Without hope, we wouldn't have had Augusta Tower. We wouldn't have had Academia. We wouldn't have had that damn moon that saved humanity. His fingerprints are all over this game, but there's a hope-shaped hole in the soundtrack list. Okay, so Knowles leitmotif shows up in 10 soundtracks in this game. Sarah, 5. Lightning, 6. Caius, 7. Yule, 5. Sass, 2. Hope, 1. Just 1. His theme didn't even make it into the credits. Neither did Lightning's, which is kinda interesting, but point still stands. They could have woven his theme into the Augusta Tower or Academia themes, but no. No, they did not. Augusta Tower? Nope. Nope. Academia. I really feel like his theme should be in here, but it's not. The B theme? I can hear traces of Noel's theme and Lightning's theme, but not Hope's. Academia theme. Nope. So many missed opportunities. Drives me crazy. <laughs> Thank you.
All we get is one soundtrack that plays in 10 and 1x AF in Jasha's Massif. That's it. I've heard a lot of reasons for the lack of host theme in this game, like rushed schedules and last minute story changes, which makes sense, I guess. I highly doubt that this decision was made to serve an in-game purpose, but the implications are actually kinda interesting. Let's put on the tinfoil tiara again and give the most likely unintentional symbolism a closer look. At the end of this game, Hope is the unchallenged leader of humanity. He's worshipped by pretty much everyone around him, and people seem to think that Hope the person and Hope the noun are the same thing. Bunivelsa isn't even awake yet, but Hope has still managed to become something very similar to a god. Maybe that's the reason why we don't hear his theme again after 10 AF. Maybe that's when Hope the person became Hope the noun. I don't really think that this is the case, but it's an interesting idea, especially considering what comes next. He really shouldn't have named that moon Bunivelsa. Next stop, the Ark. New game, new theme. The poor dude is so overlooked in this game that his theme isn't even named after him, but you can still hear the guitar from Tomorrow's Dream in the choir. I'm going to play the first notes of Tomorrow's Dream and the Ark back to back to try to show the similarities. The Ark is in a major key and it has an extra note, but I hope you understand what I mean. I don't know if that was helpful, but the arc is definitely a rearrangement of Tomorrow's Dream. The actual guitar is gone though. We have choir, piano, strings and harp, but no guitar. The guitar left the soundtrack chain in 10 AF and it's not coming back. Let's listen to the arc. It is a bit of a whiplash, it is. The major key really throws you off. <laughs> Shifting into a bit of a B theme. The choir is building a bit. So the instrumentalization is new, the chord progression is new, pretty much everything is new, but it is a part of the Hope's theme chain. It's just getting a little tricky to hear at this point. I don't know if this is helpful either, but 
this is kind of what it sounds like if you try to play all the three main themes at once. You're welcome, <laughs> considering how different the arc is compared to the previous soundtracks. I can almost understand why Hope was a fake is a hill that so many people seem to be willing to die on. Almost. Really though, he was always real. He was emotionally nerfed and under heavy godly surveillance but he was working against Bunevelsa the entire time. Not fake, not a puppet. Just drop that. It was hope. Anyway, the English translation is a little vague about this, but the reason why hope looks like a teenager again in Lightning Returns is because Bunevelsa wanted a pure vessel. If you read the reminiscence novellas, you get even more insight on how Bunevelsa abused Hope psychologically and physically, and it's just... Yikes. Yikes. You can really hear the result of that torture in the arc. Hope was remolded, and so was his soundtrack. It sounds pure, but there's something not quite right going on there under the surface. We've now reached a point where the Hope's theme chain branches out into three very different soundtracks. We've got Meeting You, then Almighty Bunevelsa, and then Last Resort. They're all based on the arc, but as we've seen throughout this video, the evolution of a soundtrack can be pretty wild. So, let's start with Meeting You. Meeting You is the soundtrack that plays during Hope's Farewell. It starts off as a piano arrangement of the arc, but then we get a violin solo and then we get a part where the strings and piano work together. There's a lot going on, but the choir and the harp are mysteriously absent. I'm going to be pretty merciless with the skips in this one. There are a lot of things I want to show you, but the soundtrack is four minutes long, so we're gonna have some skips. Beautiful intro. This is where the arrangement starts picking up the melody of the arc and not just the accompaniment. Gonna skip to the crescendo. This is so good. <laughs> Love it. We're gonna skip to the violin. You can really hear that this is where the choir should have been. And this is where we hear the piano, the strings and the solo violin work together. And crescendo. 
This scene hurts. The dialogue, the visuals, the music, it's all just... Ouch. Meeting You is a really clever soundtrack. When Hope was remolded, his... I'm gonna call it soul. It's not entirely accurate because of the whole spirit heart soul thing going on in these games, but... It's confusing, so I'm just gonna say that Hope's soul was sundered, and Meeting You is a sundered version of the Ark. The piano and the strings are still there, but the choir and the harp? Gone. Half of the soundtrack is gone. It's such a brilliant display of musical storytelling. The plot is literally there, in the music. It's brilliant. We are going to find out where those missing parts went, but first we have to deal with the most cursed descendant of Hope's theme. <sighs> yeah, it's time to talk about Almighty Bunivelsa. There isn't really all that much I can say here that I haven't already covered in my Almighty Bunivelsa video. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out, I've linked it in the description. If you don't have time to sit through nearly 40 minutes of me pointing wildly at sheet music and yelling the arc, the short version is that there are at least 10 variations of the arc in there. Might be more. I don't know. It's just 13 minutes of pure chaos and I don't want to listen to it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to. Let's just do a speed run of it. A quick peek at the madness. The Battle Arc. The Chanting Arc. The silent arc. just slipped into the harmonic arc. Slipping straight into the haunting arc. And this is where we should have had Sabre's Edge. was a wild ride. The Ark is not a cameo in Almighty Bunuelsa. It's the foundation. That's a hill that I will die on. <laughs> the process leading up to Hope merging with a capital G god was horrendous, but honestly, considering the direction of his character journey in the previous games, I think Hope would have ended up a god sooner or later anyway. He was like 90% there even before Bunuelsa woke up. He created an artificial falci, he became worshipped to the point that he stopped being a person, and he built a moon. Major godhood red flags. 
if Bonavalsa had chosen Hope to become his vessel, he would have had a competitor. Okay, so we've now covered the biggest outlier in the Hope's theme chain, but we're not quite done yet. We have a few more soundtracks to go before we reach the final evolution. Bonavalsa may be defeated, but we still need to get Hope out of there. That's when we get Last Resort. This soundtrack is named after Hope's full ATP skill in the original game, and it's also the attack that Lightning uses in the cutscene after we've defeated Bunvelsa. By stabbing Bunvelsa with a survival knife, the most emotionally loaded Chekhov's gun in the entire trilogy, she manages to reach the part of Hope that's still trapped inside the god, and she saves him. Symbolism! Right. Music. Last Resort starts off as a rearrangement of Blinded by Light, which doesn't really say all that much since it's everywhere. But around two and a half minutes in, we find the instruments that were missing in meeting you. To save us some time, I'm going to skip to that part. Just a single violin note hanging there. And here it comes, the choir rising from that emptiness. And strings and harp. We found the missing half. This is like the musical equivalent of a breath of fresh air. Our boy is back. This part of Last Resort starts playing when the survival knife descends into Bunivelsa like a shining beacon. A version of the arc using the instruments that were missing in meeting you just fades in and hope wakes up. Musical storytelling at its finest. It's brilliant. Last Resort is the final in-game version of Hope's theme, but we haven't reached the end of the chain yet. There's still one variation left, and we find that one in credits. This soundtrack is a combination of all the main characters' themes, and one of those themes is, of course, the Ark. It's not the version that plays in the actual arc, though, and it's not Last Resort either. That's why it gets its own entry in this analysis. Credits could be considered a fourth branch of the arc, but since the piano is still missing, I think it's more accurate to call it a descendant of Last Resort. It's squeezed in between Snows and Caius's theme, so I'm going to skip to around three and a half minutes in. No fade in, no soft start, just choir and strings, straight to the point. Build up here. First hint of a flute. Flute. Here comes the crescendo. Brass. This is 
an orchestral piece. is such a satisfying ending to the Hope's theme chain. In Last Resort, the theme almost sounds a bit hesitant as it starts to play. It tentatively rises from that single violin note, representing Hope emerging from the darkness in Buenavelsa. In credits, we're immediately hit with strings and choir at full force, no holding back. It's the final evolution of Hope's theme, and it's powerful. The added instruments and the lack of a dissonant piano accompaniment makes this soundtrack sound a lot more orchestral than the arc and its direct descendants. When we reach the end, the choir doesn't even overpower the other instruments anymore. In a way, it's almost like a Lightning Returns version of Sustained by Hate. He's not exactly opening up to anyone when the soundtrack plays, but the gang did just reunite after being split up for centuries. I know, it's a stretch, but I, I kinda like the idea. Full circles are always nice. So yeah, that was the final link on the Hope's theme chain. It doesn't resemble Hope's original theme at all, but if you follow the chart like we just did, you can trace it back to that melancholic solo guitar. Before I wrap this up, there's one more soundtrack that I want to add to this analysis, and that is Epilogue. This soundtrack is not a part of the Hope's theme chain, but I want to talk about it anyway. Just hear me out. In a collection of post-game novellas called Reminiscence, Tracer of Memories, a reporter interviews the main cast, trying to figure out why she and many others have vague memories from a different world. In the first interview, Hope is introduced as an independent researcher, whatever that means. It's heavily insinuated that he hasn't reunited with Lightning yet, and the reporter notes that he looks lonely. Can someone please give Hope as time a break? In the final novella, the reporter stumbles upon Lightning on a train. Lightning turns the reporter down when she asks for an interview, and the reporter accepts that. This is how the story ends. You can pause and read the whole thing if you like, but I'm going to focus on that final paragraph. May this woman, who was once a brilliant flash of light in the old world, chance upon hope. The word hope is written as a noun in the Japanese version too, but Watanabe, the author of Reminiscence and the lead scenario writer for Lightning Returns, did confirm that the double meaning was deliberate. The game tried to be discreet, but Watanabe did not. Why am I bringing all of this up in a music analysis? I'm getting there, I promise. In the epilogue of Lightning Returns, we see Lightning step off a train in what seems to be France? She looks at the beautiful scenery, she smiles, and then she says, we'll be together, echoing the words that Hope said to her when he saved her from becoming the goddess of death. With all of this in mind, let's listen to Epilogue. Acoustic guitar. the violin. Mm -hmm. 
playing the first three notes of the chorus of Blinded by Light. And here comes the call and response section. The violin calls and the guitar responds. This is so peaceful. <laughs> Final soundtrack in the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy. It's been 10 years and it still makes me emotional. <laughs> Epilogue is a simple duet between a violin and an acoustic guitar. Considering the context I mentioned earlier, I don't think it's that far-fetched to say that Lightning might have reached a point in her healing process where she's finally ready to meet her old partner again. The responding melody on the guitar has nothing to do with Hope's original theme, but maybe this is the start of something new. Maybe this epilogue is supposed to symbolize the two of them finally moving on. I want to believe that, because after everything they've been through, they both deserve some peace. And that, my friends, is a wrap. I've always been fascinated by the evolution of Hope's theme. Like I said in the beginning, Sustained by Hate and Almighty Bunuvelsa have basically nothing in common, but they do share the same root. The same goes with all the soundtracks on the Hope's theme chain. Sometimes you just have to backtrack a little to find the common denominator. And sometimes a little means a lot. The story of Hope S. Time is one tragedy after another, but his soundtrack chain does end on a somewhat positive note. When we finally reach the credits of Lightning Returns, we get this powerful arrangement of the arc that's free from Bunuvelsa's chaotic influence. Still no guitar, but it's orchestral. I'll take what I can get with this poor dude. In Reminiscence, we find out that even in the new world, hope suffers from loneliness. That's why I want to believe that the guitar in the epilogue is supposed to represent him. I want to believe that he's found himself again, and that once that cutscene is over, he'll no longer be alone. Thank you for watching this massive breakdown video. If you enjoyed it, you could always press the like button or leave a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts. With that said, I am done. Bye!